In two previous videos, I tested these Lito Kala 32700 cells. I purchased them on AliExpress and they're lithium iron phosphate. In the most recent video, I performed a 15 amp and 20 amp discharge test using constant current and I also observed the temperature of the cells while under discharge. So in today's video, we're going to be testing these at 30 amps. The four 32700 cells you see here are assembled in series because I'm going to be making a flat 12 volt battery pack. So when I do this test, what I'm going to do is fully charge this cell to 3.65 volts using my specialized charger, and I'm going to charge this one here. We're going to perform the same 30 amp constant discharge test twice to see how well the cells perform. I'm going to keep a very close eye on the temperature using my thermal imager, and we're going to make sure the battery does not drop below 2.5 volts. If I see the temperature of this cell starts to exceed 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius, the test is going to be stopped. Okay guys, everything is set up. You can see I'm going to be using my DC load tester. The only thing is each one of the channels only goes up to 20 amps and I need to do 30 amps in this cradle that I designed in another video. So what I did is I bridged both of the channels together. Now what I'm going to do is use 15 amps on one channel, 15 on the other. It's going to be running at the exact same time to place a 30 amp load on the cell. In the previous video, I had a little bit of heating issue because of the clamp that was on the end of this wire. So what I did is I changed this out now for the higher current using number 10 stranded copper, use ring connectors, rated up to 30 amps, and everything here is soldered using silver bearing solder directly to each one of those copper contact points. There should be a minimal amount of resistance and heating with this setup. The test is going to start off with 15 amps right there on channel two. Push this button here, channel one, 15 amps. I have the cutoff at 2.2. Now the reason for that, I'm not going to let the machine turn this off like I did in a previous video. What I'm going to do is monitor the voltage of the cell directly at the cell. And the reason for that will have a more accurate reading at the very end because the voltage drop across this wire so the battery voltage may show 2.5 here but it may be 2.65 here and we're going to lose a little bit of the milliamp hour capacity if this turns off before this drops to 2.5 so what I'm doing is measuring the voltage directly at the cell. You're going to see it right here. When this drops to 2.5 volts, I'm going to immediately stop both tests. And we're going to see what the total capacity is for the cell by looking at the DC electronic load. We'll combine channel 1 and channel 2. While the cell is being discharged at 30 amps, I'll keep a very close eye on the temperature using the thermal imager. Let's place the cell in the holder. Tighten it down and get the test started. Channel 1 on, channel 2 on. So not too bad of a voltage drop, that's a good thing. Okay, let's take a look with the thermal imager from the top. Cell is already heating up a little bit. Temperature of the cell is increasing. Now up to 138.5, getting close. We have to shut down any minute. You can see it's getting close to 2.5. As soon as it hits 2.5, I'm going to stop both channels. And we'll repeat the test one more time. There we go. That's it. I have the second cell on my charger to make sure it's fully topped off. And you can see right over here, 2877 for channel 1, that's the amp hour capacity. 
and channel 2, 2877. The two together come out to 5,750 amp hours, which is very similar to the results from my previous videos. The second cell is ready to go, fully charged, 3565, 357. Let's turn it on and on. Very similar voltage drop between here and there. And now a temperature reading halfway through. It's about five and a half minutes. And the cell is getting pretty warm, 119.8. And you can see the temperature of the wire, it's very warm. Now another reading at nine minutes. And we're at almost 135 degrees Fahrenheit. So you know the temperature on the inside is much hotter if it's going to be 135 degrees Fahrenheit on the outside. And we're at 10 minutes and 15 seconds. And that will be down to 2.5 volts fairly quickly. This cell is running just a little bit longer. Getting ready to turn it off. Here we go. Boom, boom. Okay, let's measure the temperature. Yeah, this exceeded. This is at 151. I would suggest not discharging these at the 30 amp constant current level, keeping it around 25, like I said in the previous video, because you're going to end up greatly reducing the life of these cells due to excessive heat. This one right here hit 150, and the other one I think was 142. And right over here is the amp hour capacity for channel 2, which is 3000. Channel 1, 3043. So right around 6080 amp hours. So the average capacity for these cells is just under 5900 amp hours. And that is it. I hope you found these tests helpful. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up. Share the link to this video on other websites and blogs and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thanks for watching.